Hello, and thank you for watching this video on how to securely store .NET application configuration and secrets in the AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store. My name is Carlos Santos, and I'm a Microsoft Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. In this video, we'll change an existing ASP.NET Core MVC application and create a brand new AWS Lambda function and have them both use Parameter Store for their configuration information. AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store allows you to improve your security posture by separating your application configuration and secrets from your code. It does this by providing secure hierarchical storage where you can keep data such as passwords that do not need automatic rotation, configuration information such as Amazon machine image IDs, or license codes. You can store these values as either plain text or encrypted data using AWS Key Management Service and maintain a history of up to 100 versions of a parameter. What I mean by hierarchical storage is that instead of having a flat list of parameters, you can model a hierarchy by using a parameter name that includes forward slashes as a delimiter for each level. For example, say you wanted to model a hierarchy where the top of the hierarchy is the application name, followed by the environment name, and then the parameter itself, the parameter would be forward slash my application, forward slash development, forward slash license code. We'll take a closer look at this during the demonstration. You can use this hierarchy not only for retrieving values, but also for controlling access to parameters. Identity and access management policies can be used to not only control which API actions a user has access to, but also which levels of the hierarchy. Continuing with the previous example, you can limit a developer's access to only parameters that begin with forward slash my application, forward slash development, so they can only access parameters for the development environment. You can also auto access the parameters using AWS CloudTrail. And using AWS CloudWatch, you can configure change notifications and trigger automated actions when changes do occur. Integration with other AWS services goes beyond just IAM CloudWatch and CloudTrail. You can reference parameters directly from management tools such as AWS CloudFormation and developer tools like AWS CodeBuild, AWS CodePipeline, and AWS CodeDeploy and also compute services like Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Amazon Elastic Container Service, and AWS Lambda. There are two available tiers, Standard and Advanced, which affects features such as the maximum value size and the number of parameters that can be stored. There are also two different throughput configurations, Standard and High, which affects the number of transactions per second that Parameter Store can process. Parameter Store starts at no additional charge if you select both Standard Tier and Standard Throughput. The AWS.NET configuration extension for Systems Manager NuGet package simplifies using Parameter Store as a source for configuration information. The NuGet package does that by providing a .NET configuration provider that pulls configuration data from Parameter Store on your behalf. You do not need to worry about making the API calls yourself. The SDK does all of the heavy lifting for you. So rather than storing data in config files or referencing them in plain text, you can store and obtain this information in your application or scripts using this .NET configuration provider. The provider allows for caching values and automatic reload. You can also specify whether configuration data is optional or not. And if you have multiple configuration parameters, you can load all of them just by specifying the prefix and you can also optionally provide filters. This NuGet package supports both the .NET generic host and the web host. Let's take a look at the NuGet package in action. I have opened a sample of ASP.NET Core application that stores configuration information in a local configuration file. We're going to walk through how to change this application to start using Systems Manager Parameter Store for these values. Let me first run the application and walk you through the user interface and where configuration values are used. Here we see the Unicorn Bike Sale site, which is written using ASP.NET Core MVC and NAD Framework Core. Both the header and a database connection string used to retrieve the lists, such as components and clothing, are read from the app settings file. We'll switch both of these to get the values from Parameter Store instead. Let's look at the app settings file so that you can see where these values are coming from. We use .NET Core's standard connection string element for our database connection string named default connection and a custom one for the title. As you can see, both of these configuration settings use a hierarchy within a JSON document, and we'll mimic this in Parameter Store as well. The header razor component uses this configuration value for the header text. Let's go there next. 
Here you can see the iConfiguration interface being injected as the configuration variable. This lets us access the configuration providers within the body. We use the configuration variable to navigate the configuration hierarchy to get to the title. The connection string is used during startup when we register the DB context in the configure services method. Here you can see the call to add DB context and the call to get connection string using the name default connection from our app settings file. Okay, let's get started with making the changes needed to use parameter store. Let's go ahead and go to the AWS Management Console and create the parameters. We will select AWS Systems Manager from the list of services. We'll go to Parameter Store using the navigation menu on the left. We'll use a very simple naming convention of application name forward slash environment. For this example, we'll use forward slash unicorn dash bikes forward slash development as the prefix for all of our parameters. The forward slashes are separators that allow us to represent a hierarchy. After that prefix, we'll use the same hierarchy that we saw in the app settings file. We'll start with the title information. So we'll use titles forward slash main. We will leave the tier as standard, the type as string, and copy the value from the app settings file, but add v2 so that we can tell that the value is coming from parameter store. Since we don't need automatic password rotation, we've chosen to use parameter store to keep the connection string. We'll create another parameter and use the same prefix. This time we'll follow .NET Core's connection string structure for the parameter name, starting with connection strings, followed by the name of default connection. We will leave the tier as standard, but this time we'll use secure string as the type. Once we do that, we'll be prompted for the AWS Key Management Service key information. We'll use the AWS Manage Customer Master Key that Systems Manager automatically creates to encrypt the value. And take the connection string from the app settings file and paste it here. Now that we have the secrets created, let's make the changes to the project. First thing we have to do is add the AWS.NET configuration extension for Systems Manager NuGet package. The name of the package is Amazon.extensions.configuration.systemsmanager. We'll install the package, and that will also install its dependencies. Once it's installed, all we need to do to start using Parameter Store is add the configuration provider included in the NuGet package. We do that by modifying the create web host builder method in the program class. We'll add a call to configure app configuration after the create default builder method call. As you can see, we're just simply adding a call to add systems manager, specifying the prefix we use when creating the parameters. We construct a prefix using the environment name property of the hosting environment. This will load all of the parameters with that prefix, and since we provided that value for reload after, the parameters will be cached for a period of five minutes. Let's delete the values from the app settings file so that we aren't picking them up from there. Those are all the changes needed. Notice that we didn't have to change any of our code as a result of using the parameter store configuration provider. Even the call to get connection strings is now using the secret stored in Parameter Store. Now that we've made the necessary changes, we can go ahead and run the application again. And here, you can see the new title coming from Parameter Store. And the list can still be populated from the database. We're going to take a slightly different approach and see how we can integrate AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store with AWS Lambda using a brand new project. First, we'll close this solution and select AWS Serverless Application from the project templates. We'll go ahead and give the project a name and click Create. This brings up the Blueprint Selection window. 
we'll select ASP.NET Core Web API for this sample. First, we'll go ahead and set up the app settings file to reference our AWS profile. I am using the US East 1 region and a default profile. The rest of the steps are pretty similar to before. We'll add the AWS.NET configuration extension for Systems Manager NuGet package. Once it's installed, all we need to do to start using Parameter Store is add the configuration provider included in the NuGet package. We do that by modifying the host builder setup methods in both the Lambda entry point and the local entry point classes to add Systems Manager. Let's start with the Lambda entry point class. This is the Lambda function's entry point when our code is executed by Lambda. It is recommended that we configure the host builder in the init method, so let's go ahead and add Systems Manager there. Once we do that, let's go ahead and move on to the local entry point class and configure the host builder. This is the entry point when we execute the Lambda function locally using the Kestrel web server. Now that we have SSM configured, let's change the values controller's get method so that it returns the title name. We will leave the default route of API slash controller alone, but take a note of it so that we know how to invoke the method. First, we have to inject iConfiguration so that we can reference the configuration provider. We'll do this by creating a constructor and saving a reference as a field. Next, we'll change the get method to return the main title. Before we do that though, we do have to keep in mind that in AWS Lambda, background tasks are paused after processing a Lambda event. Given that we use the reload after parameter when we added Systems Manager as a configuration provider, this could prevent the provider from retrieving the latest configuration data from Parameter Store. To ensure the reload is performed within a Lambda event, we recommend calling the extension method wait for Systems Manager reload to complete of the iConfiguration object in your Lambda function. This method will immediately return unless the reload is currently being performed. We have to import the Amazon.extensions.configuration.systemsmanager namespace and specify a timeout value, which represents the maximum amount of time we'll wait for the reload to complete. Next, we'll change the get method to use the configuration field to traverse the parameter hierarchy and retrieve the parameter title. That's it. Let's go ahead and run the code. I'll change the address of the API's route to invoke the value controller's get method. As you can see, the value from Parameter Store is returned. You can visit the project's GitHub page at github.com forward slash AWS forward slash AWS dash dot net dash extensions dash configuration where you will find more information on getting started, even more samples, and how to contribute to the project. In this video, we saw how we can use the AWS.NET configuration extension for Systems Manager NuGet package to add support for AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store as a source for configuration data. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Thank you for watching.